رحبوا معي بملاك هلال Ever since I was a kid, I have dreamt of pursuing a career that will make a difference, either in someone's life or to the world in general. So I would daydream about being a doctor and going in the streets and rescuing someone who's injured in an accident or inventing a solution that would solve uh, world hunger, for example, or reverse climate change. I did not see myself in a nine to five job where I would scroll through endless emails all day and just like navigate my daily tasks on autopilot. So as you can tell, my favorite shows growing up were Dr. House and Extreme Engineering and not The Office. Fast forward um, to the last two years of my bachelor's degree in chemical engineering at Texas A&M. I got into undergraduate research for the first time. Research feels like you're on a big adventure with daily tasks every day that feel like missions that you have to tackle. Never one day feels like the next one. You will have endless possibilities to tackle all of your missions and at the end, you reach an end goal and feel very satisfied. And the cherry on top is knowing that your work is contributing to a very critical topic or field and is helping make the world a better place. So my, uh, um, my, uh, my master's thesis is about ultra-accelerated aging and characterization of thin film materials. And basically what this means is that we take thin film coatings and we expose them to what's equivalent to thousands of suns and then we study how they degrade and how much they degrade in a very short amount of time. So let me give you an example, something that is relatable. Let's say you have a car and the car is painted. The paint on the car is exposed to the environmental conditions outside. And after, let's say, five years of using your car, you will notice that the paint will have some cracks and it will have some discoloration and you will probably have to get it repainted. Some people also choose to put a clear coating on the car to kind of protect it, but that coating as well is prone to degradation. So basically what we do, those five years or X years of degradation, we can simulate that in experiments that last 30 minutes or less. And with that, we can save a lot of time and we can save a lot of resources. And so I chose a career in graduate uh, in doing research because I felt like it was something that was not mundane, something that would match my interests and my dream of doing big things when I was a kid. But doing graduate research is not a walk in the park. And that was expected. What I did not expect though is that um, the things that actually take a toll on you during your graduate journey might not necessarily have to do with the technical content itself. So many things have to do with cultivating self-accountability, with doing things with your own deadlines, setting your own deadlines, breaking down your own tasks, and basically not having someone be on your shoulders all the time telling you what to do. And that is challenging. So like mental health is very important in, in this journey because once you are shocked from moving from undergraduate where everyone, you had like um, teachers had deadlines, the tasks and the courses were already broken down for you, you move into an environment where you don't really have small tasks, you have an end goal and you have to kind of like draft the journey for yourself. And that is challenging. No wonder that a 2017 study shows that one in three PhD students is prone to developing mental health issues and issue, especially depression. And a 2018 Harvard study also shows that graduate um, researchers or graduate students are three times more likely than the average American 
to develop mental health issues like depression. And this was expected, and I did relate to those findings during my journey. But like, can you imagine that breaking down in tears while writing a research journal or doing a task was not a thing outside of the graduate research community? I mean, it's crazy. It was only us. Back when I was doing my bachelor's and finishing up my bachelor's, we were called the pandemic batch. COVID-19 took us out of campus and put us online for the entire duration of our senior year and during the first year of our master's. That was not easy. The adaptation itself, apart from the work-related or material-related stress, was overwhelming. Add to that your responsibility to be more self-accountable, and to add on like to that like the responsibility that you have to um, build the habit of putting to yourself that was really challenging what we did as a batch was we created sort of this support system for each other what we would do is we would for example set personal deadlines for ourselves and inform the others and then we would check in on each other's deadlines to create some sort of accountability. With time, and as we do this, meeting your own deadlines that you set for yourself becomes a habit, and you become more adjusted to it, and you start doing it second nature. So this was really helpful. Another resource that is um, that can be easily uh, disregarded is the help of your mentors. So your supervisors have done this before you. They have been through this journey, and you can ask for their help and support, not just for the technical stuff, but also for the process, for time management, for soft skills, for how to deal with the stress and anxiety. As I went on in my um, graduate journey, and as I became more close to my supervisor, as a mentor and as a person, it became much easier for me to approach him for issues related to being anxious, to missing a deadline, to having to do something because I was not feeling motivated or shifting directions, for example, if I was stuck on a task for too long. And this will probably also be possible for you. So what you can do is you can approach your supervisors and treat them as real mentors and get to know them as people because they understand the struggle that you're going through and they would be more likely to help you and to forgive some of your um, some of your bad days more than you would think they would. And so at last, going through this journey was kind of rough. And the challenges that I went through were challenging at the time, but you emerge from these experiences as a more independent, confident problem solver. These days of like having stress and anxiety, they don't last. The most important thing is that you recognize the day you, you are aware of your mental well-being and you try to actually find strategies and techniques to build with to deal with the stress before it builds and accumulates. You have to be aware of that. You have to create a very personalized experience because not one solution or technique will work for everybody. Like for example, I could be tired of sitting long hours in front of a screen and the thing that will work for me is taking, for example, long walks or like sharing the accountability with my friends and having them check in on me or be um, on good terms with my supervisor and asking for advice. What works for you will be very tailored and unique to you. So try to experiment along the way and try to find what works for you. In a world full of complex societal, environmental, and economic issues, research and development and innovation are really our only hope for a better future. And ourselves as graduate researchers, we are the main drivers for this hope. So remember, no matter how challenging this might get, that you're literally contributing to making the world a better place.
And you know what they say? Not all heroes wear capes. Some of them wear goggles and lapros. Thank you.